Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Satesh Nimbwani. I'm from Customer Engineering from TIPCO. And along with me, I have Rakesh and Chandra from T-Mobile. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining us today. Uh, before we get started, uh, how many of you here do app integration, build microservices, APIs? Wow. Uh, have you heard of TIPCO before? Nice. A little bit more hands would probably do good, but uh, we will settle for this. So hopefully in the next 30 minutes, we'll give you a little bit of overview of what uh, TIPCO does and how TIPCO has helped uh, T-Mobile to in their digital transformation. Uh, Chandra and Rakesh from T-Mobile have been spending over a decade now for building apps using TIPCO. They've started off with the traditional and the famous ESB services styles and they're slowly moving away to leverage microservices and APIs. Now, to, in order to meet the emerging needs and demands and uh, for the vision of digital transformation, T-Mobile leverages TIPCO BusinessWorks Container Edition and Pivotal Cloud Foundry not only to meet their customer volumes, but also to provide them a unified experience across all the channels. Uh, so, Rakesh, over to you. Why don't you let us know a little bit more on the story? Thank you. Hi. Uh, my name is Rakesh. I'm principal engineer at T-Mobile. Um, so to, just a brief introduction of what is T-Mobile. T-Mobile is one of the largest wireless 4G LTE providers at, uh, here. And we are based out of Bellevue, Washington. And we have about 73 million subscribers base uh, in the last quarter uh, reports as of. And we operate under two flagship brands, that is T-Mobile and Metro PCS. <clears throat> so what is, uh, what is T-Mobile doing? T-Mobile, uh, like you said, Uncarrier is redefining the way customers and businesses subscribe to the wireless services through this. And um, how are we doing? We have been redefining the way carriers provide the wireless services. And we have been doing so through of our various uncarrier moves, like our uh, CEO, our famous CEO, John Ledger, calls out this is the various uncarrier moves that we provide or, uh, or the provide to the customers that either solve their pain points or give them the features that they really need. So off of this wireless uncarrier moves, if you see one, if you see, I'll call out a few of them. I think most of you would have used it is the wireless, free wireless internet in GoGo -Go in flight. And also we have this carrier freedom where, the, where we are defined as no contracts at all. And the, the most and recent one is the Netflix on us where you subscribe to a T-Mobile plan, you get a free Netflix. So what does this mean to us as an IT industry, right? So yes, we have been providing all this pain, solving all the pain points of the customer, but what does this do to our IT systems that we're running behind the scenes? It provides a lot of stress in, on the systems that we have to meet or cater to to meet the rise in the volumes and rise in the uh, need for different APIs and everything. So for that, what are we solving? We, we want it to be uh, more agile in nature for that matter. So for example, we need to get the code out of the, from development into prod to get to one of those uncarrier moves in pretty fast. Like we used to do in traditionally in the ESB model, we used to do in several months. Now we wanted to get it out in weeks. And we also want an infrastructure to be more scalable. And uh, we also want the environment stability and, and configuration. So how did we do it? So to achieve all this or to solve these problems, what did we do is that we established core pillars of our, which we call it as digital pillars in our world. Like, a, like in any company, it, it's not just IT being the digital is more important. It has to be all the way from digital marketing, business, and experience, and also up to the operations. So. Which, these are the things that we refer to as pillars of our digital transformation that we embarked the journey upon, where digital marketing, you mean like you reach out to more customers using their more social media channels, and business 
would refer to more products and services that are more catered towards the exact need of the customer rather than giving the bulk load of all the products. And operational intelligence and digital service management is forefront of that to maintain the stability pain point. So to aligning to the digital pillars, we established a couple of design goals that we wanted to always meet when we are doing in this digital journey. I, like you can see, like things social, more analytical and cloud native, and being experience device APIs, meaning to say that always think from customer downwards, not from the system that you provide the business from and provide an API for. And also build, like going through all of them, like build elastic uh, environment where you can meet the needs of the customers as and when uh, the, from the infrastructure perspective, and always on is more forefront of it. Just to give, this is the more a high, very high level inf reference architecture that we have. It's pretty much a cookie cutter architecture like any other thing. Just to show you what we have, are different channels on the top, and different billing systems, and other BI and omni channels that at the bottom, and we have the selling and servicing channels, and we have our uh, existing and modified TIPCO container edition running on Pivotal Cloud Foundry, which also adopts the DevOps model of more CI-CD pipelines as well. So what are the core capabilities that we try to achieve? Were modeled around being the capability and domain. So like I said, it should be always a top-down approach of the business services. So think to the, like, what is the experience that you want to deliver to the channel or the customer? And design your API around it, which we refer to as experience-driven APIs. And uh, it, they should be more stateless and dynamic to be discovered to the API so that you don't, people figure out the APIs that exist out there on their own from the gateways and also the deployment process and catalog. What is our end goal? Our end goal is to represent T-Mobile as a service. What does, what the, from the slide, I can just take a moment to explain this. Like we want, like at the core of the, the core of T-Mobile as a service, we want to represent our core functionalities, which are different capabilities provided by the various systems, like the customer management, payment, selling, inventory, and various billing systems. And um, we want to do, like, uh, like I always said, we want to do an experience-driven APIs. What does it mean is that if a customer is trying to do a payment through a social channel, right, through a Twitter handle, he doesn't need to know all the billing history and everything that you have. You rather give him an API that only delivers to that particular where he goes quickly and makes a payment. Likewise, you have a customer who's trying to buy a purchase a particular plan or a phone on the on the smartphone that he has, right? So in traditional world, if you try to provide a service or an API that ta uh, provides that capability, you would give him a detailed explanation of the features and everything and often the phone, right? But in this particular channel, we don't have the time or real estate on the phone to browse through all the content of it. So we rather cater him an API that is more specific to the smartphone that he's viewing it on so that it is an experience driven for that particular device he's using. Likewise, on the website where people want to use and see and feel of everything that he has and everything. So we have an experience driven API for the web content. Likewise, what does that do, right? To derive all these experience APIs, if I push them down to the core systems, like my billing systems or any other servicing systems that we have, it puts a lot of burden on them to maintain all that, right? So like the billing system has to maintain every channel specific API that the customer wants or the device and he has to keep track of it. So for that matter, what we said was, okay, we will do a core API layer which will encompass or abstract the billing systems from all these experiences, keep them more specific to what they really provide. Like for the, for the billing system, it will always provide you me the billing history payments or anything for that particular capability I'm driving upon. And it's the experience API layer that derives the con particular content to that particular channel that the customer is subscribing upon. This is how we abstract our this thing. And it will allow us to 
provide our core systems as a service for all the channels that we have, and which is our end vision of goal of T-Mobile as a service. Now, what does this mean, right? This means that I need API-driven architecture or for, the, for my entire uh, integration, app integration layer. So that's where our partnership with TIPCO has helped us along. We have been on TIPCO for a while, and we have been running on the traditional infrastructures on the, on the physical hardware and in infrastructure. So that's where we catered on, we started on this journey of containerizations of APIs. On this containerization journey, we embarked upon, we chose Pivotal Cloud Foundry our, as our infrastructure provider or Elastic Runtime Pass, that is in-house. And we wanted a, we, we partnered with TIPCO to come up with a TIPCO containerized software, which can be deployed and scaled and driven to that particular demand or needs. That's where our journey with TIPCO Business Works Container Edition has started upon, and we have been running successfully so far we are, we are about 150-odd apps, which is like uh, not roughly about 500 containers that we are running upon, and which, which serves up to, we are, we are doing a volume scales up to almost up to 125 million calls per day. And this is all running on Pivotal Cloud Foundry and everything. So I will... Having said that, I would like to bring, so all this is from the development perspective, how we have done it and how we have scaled upon on the Pivotal Cloud Foundry and using the TIPCO Business Works Container Edition. I also would like to invite my colleague who is from the ops perspective, what does he see? What uh, Did he see what we have delivered to the operational standpoint? Because this, like I said, system stability and configuration is forefront of all of this to achieve our end goal as well. So, Chandra. Thank you, Rakesh. Uh, so, I'm from uh, I'm Chandra. I'm from uh, operational team. So, I don't know how many people are from operational world here. Any anybody does production support here? Okay, awesome. <laughs> okay, I mean my goal. I mean I know you you guys saw Rakesh as a developer. His goals. I mean he wants to solve customer pain points wants to do microservices. But as an operator, I have different goals. My simple goal is I need to sleep when everybody, I mean, normal people sleeping time, I want to sleep, right? <clears throat> that is my primary goal. What, what does that tell you? I mean, if, you are if your operator is sleeping during his normal night times, that means your systems are available, right? I mean, is a primary goal is your systems are highly available 24 by 7. You have all the data, right, 24 by 7. Uh, and you have all the telemetric data available, so that's why that person is able to sleep. But, I mean, six to eight months ago, that was not my life. I mean, I used to work from, I mean, our maintenance window is from 10 p.m. till 2 a.m. in the morning. So I'm, I'm always up and running, always doing deployments during nighttime. Why do I need to do deployments when everybody is sleeping, right? So th this is a kind of problem we want to solve as an operator, right? That, that is one primary goal. And the secondary, I mean, secondary issue is, like, I had, like, f almost, like, 2,000 physical servers I had, right? And I have configuration files everywhere, right? And I might have had a proper configuration file on, let's say, 1,999 servers, but I missed on one server. That used to call, caused a lot of production issues, right? So we never had this configuration as code. We, we never had that uh, philosophy in T-Mobile before, like six to eight months ago, right? Uh, and the other problem we used to have is, like, logging, right? I mean, it's, it's on your developer mercy. If he's writing loggings, you have the telemetry. Otherwise, God knows what's happening in the production, right? So all these kinds, I mean, these are the different problems we, uh, we have. And you know what happens in we are in telecom world, and there is a big event happen every year September. I don't know why people go crazy, but the Apple promo is a nightmare for us. I mean, you don't believe I got a call just like 20 minutes ago from a network engineer saying that, hey, we need to get ready for Apple promo for this year. I was like, what the heck? We are, we are I don't know what. So we, have, we are like six months away from that event. But during every iPhone promo, we used to worry about the capacity, right? 
we used to hard we used to order this hardware uh, we used to rack it up stack it up right deploy the code for farmers testing and still my boss who is here he he, ne he never had the confidence like dude is it going to work i don't know <laughs> right we prepared for 3x load but what if 5x load comes right all these are the different problems we had i mean 6 to 8 months this is the real story guys i mean i'm not i'm not making up i mean as a operator i lost the sleep right we are always constantly worried we we have no we have zero confidence in our systems but beautiful things happen right i mean things change so that's that's when pcf came and along the way i mean we invested in tipco from last 10 years right we had lot of people i mean developers operators our operations team right they were all over the place and luckily tipco came up with tipco ce right if not it would have been a big learning curve for everyone right i mean we would have need to train these people on different technologies but luckily tipco came with tipco ce and pcf is there i mean rob used to ask me who rob is who is my boss he used to ask me <coughs> chandra i want to have a single click button where i can where i can increase the capacity now rob your dream is fulfilled now right <laughs> So that's where our journey started. I mean, PCF solved our problems in the capacity-wise, uh, and also it it brought an immense change in our uh, mind shift happened in the T-Mobile. Right? Previously, I don't know. I don't know Jenkins before. I don't know what is CI/CD, right? But all those things. I mean, because these products are so. I mean. uh the, the 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 principles of these products are like ci cd like telemetry like circuit breakers right i mean circuit breakers i mean that's that's a big deal right i mean the back end system slows down i got a call 2 o'clock in the morning i was like dude what can i do back end system is slow right but still the front end guy says dude i don't care back end system fails or not i i want a proper response right if i had circuit breakers i wouldn't have got the call at 2 o'clock i would have been sleeping still right but these are the problems right so to solve all these problems i mean tipco and pcf right they came up with these bells and whistles and that's when we started embracing pcf so if you if you have any of these problems in your company go for it go embrace pcf they solve all these problems of course you need to have a strong infrastructure team like we have right who made everything possible i mean everything is self -serv self servable right so so if you have any of the problems i mentioned go for pcf and if you invested in tipco go embrace that technology too so that that's how that's 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 the benefit as an operator right so i'm now i'm able to sleep right now i'm pressing the single button i mean expanding the uh, containers without worrying about the capacity uh so as an example right <clears throat> so this is this this is how our tipco ce plus uh, pcf look like when we did iphone 8 so i'm with t-mobile from last 10 years we did i i did bunch of iphone launches so far and this is the first iphone launch i was not before i was not in the office i was not before my boss i was attending another conference and uh, still we were able to successfully launch this product using pcf how did we do so <clears throat> i think we our conference was still 5:30 pm right we came to hotel we put bunch of uh, auto scaling rules i think we had a couple of drinks rob i don't want to say that <laughs> but see we had a couple of drinks but still the traffic was you see the traffic ramped up i see the pcf containers was ramping up right and we were successfully able to launch the product so that's the beauty i mean we we were always used to worry about the uh, capacity but we no longer Uh, worry about those capacity right now and as uh, rakesh was mentioning uh, this is the old picture uh, but right now <laughs> we are doing around uh, uh, 225 120 million i mean 120 million transactions within the tipco platform but we have other middleware uh, middleware platforms where i mean combinedly we are doing around uh, 220 million transactions and uh, uh, 150 applications around 7 700 to 800 containers are there uh, it's a great story uh, the other thing again again this is uh, uh, the next one 
uh, iPhone X launch, again, the same story. We, we never worried about uh, uh, capacity any longer. I mean, even the, the network engineer who called me uh, earlier, I said, don't worry, we are on PCF. So uh, I don't need to order any new hardware. I don't need to worry about anything, right? Uh, but that's awesome. That's, that's, that's the story. So, uh, oh, there's one more, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, this is awesome. So, so with, uh, by adapting to PCF, right, I mean, uh, uh, we, were, we are able to now gather more telemetric data. So with the, uh, the Splunk integration, native Splunk integration uh, within the PCF and TIPCO CE, right, now we are able to, we are able to get more data out of systems and uh, we, are, we, are, we are catching those issues uh, much earlier before they become high critical issues on our environment, right? And uh, as I said before, right, uh, we, we, now we have a configures code, right? So now we no longer keep property files on Unix boxes any longer. You don't, you don't, I mean, I mean, a couple of years ago, you were hearing the config, config drift. We, we don't talk about config drift anymore, right? So because you have all these property files in a config server, now, now the property files are same everywhere. Uh, that is the one problem we solved. Second problem we solved, the uh, capacity issues we solved. We solved the telemetry issues, right? And I don't need to, I mean, we, we did the PCF. I mean, the, the only learning curve is we had to learn a couple of uh, PCF commands, right? CF push, a uh, few commands, and we are, not able, we are now able to support. I mean, even my offshore team, right? We, we don't have to train them. Even though I, I, we moved from a archaic legacy 10 years old system to this wonderful system, but we are still running with the same, same people, same skills. Uh, that, that's, that, that, that's the learning curve, right? Only the PCF was the learning curve for us. So that's awesome thing. Hitesh? That's pretty interesting insights, Chandra and Rakesh. Thanks, guys. Like, we really happy. We at TIPCO are really happy and proud to be a part of this journey with you guys. Uh, I mean, we keep talking about this story. We hear about it many times. And every time we feel, it like really thrills us. Thanks again for all this. So uh, we've heard uh, both Rakesh and Chandra say the integration needs are evolving, right? Right from the building enterprise applications, the monolith applications, to moving to a microservices-driven architectures, to API-driven microservices, all in all to you know, uh, adopt the digital transformation. Now, what we've seen or observed is pervasive integration is driven by different sorts of audience. Uh, the business users actually need business apps to digitize the processes and improve the work stream efficiencies. The enterprise IT users need to provide access to data and systems across various channels, be it on cloud, on-prem, and on-edge devices too. And as a developer, I would want to be focused on building my application components in a faster and efficient way with more openness, connectivity, and adaptability as well, right? Now, the good news is uh, TIPCO Cloud integration uh, supports all of these personas, use cases, different in a different way. Now, uh, what we've also seen is three main focus areas is for driving a digital transformation, we need APIs. Uh, providing an API is a key enabler for it. So with API modeler capability of TIPCO Cloud integration, which I'll be probably talking in a few minutes, uh, we let you follow an API-first approach to define your API flows for easier maintenance. The second main focus is to embrace modern application development and integration techniques, which is why, as a developers, again, we want to build services faster. We want to lower the operation cost by even being able to deploy it on serverless or fast architectures. Uh, I also want the flexibility to be able to deploy anywhere right from on-prem to hybrid to even on edge devices. Uh, the last point is to simplify integration and connectivity. This is where we, you can leverage the pre-built connectors, not just for any application data, but also for network technologies. So connecting to all these different endpoints using your applications within your enterprise and beyond your enterprise has become much more easier and faster now with TIPCO Cloud integration. So, uh, TIPCO Cloud Integration also provides you a future-ready foundation. Uh, when we say future-ready foundation, it is also powered by uh, open source Flogo at its core, uh, which not only ensures you have a zero lock-in with any cloud, but also gives you an ability to leverage the open community for innovation. Uh, it also has native support to be deployed on uh, serverless platforms. 
like AWS Lambda. So, uh, and also, you can directly de deploy on every edge devices, so you're ready for all the IoT transformations coming up. Uh, and lastly, it also has the capability and the tooling support for uh, integrating with uh, flows like you know, Google TensorFlow. So uh, I'll, in the interest of time, I'll actually skip to a demo flow which we have. Uh, so what we're doing is we have a TIPCO cloud integration where we are defining the API contract using the API modeler. I'm implementing the API using Business Studio. Now, once my APIs are implemented, we actually uh, publish or push these services both on Pivotal Cloud Foundry and the Kubernetes, which is managed by the Pivotal Container Service. And uh, all of this is done through the, the open source Maven plugin. Again, this is where life for Chandra has become easier with the CI CD operations we've talked about, right? Uh, so, and all of these, or my APIs have been published to a product called Tipco Mastery, which lets you do all the API management, things like uh, enforcing any policies, throttlings, and all that stuff. Now, that's on the service side. And all, as a client, what we're doing is we are invoking Flogo Flow as a function in Project Riff. Uh, so we'll be showing more about that. Depending upon where the request comes in, if the request is coming in from, from a US region, the request is uh, routed to Pivotal Cloud Foundry. And if it's coming from a UK region, it is uh, routed to my Kubernetes service. So I I'll show this some of it in action now. So cloud.tipco.com, this is our Tipco Cloud integration website. So I've already defined my API spec here uh, for a service where we are able to want to fetch the account details depending upon the customer details and the regions we are in. Uh, so if you look at the CF Summit uh, app here, that's my API spec. Uh, we have a path parameter for customer ID and a query parameter for a region. And uh, uh, so you can export this simply in two different formats and actually use them to implement your APIs. Uh, you can preview this to look like how it looks. And uh, you can go back, create actually mock applications. Uh, that's what makes this even more powerful. So you can make, create mock applications, create a Flogo app. Uh, for this demo specific purpose, I'm using the Tipco Business Studio, uh, which is from Business Works Container Edition, and that's the component which the friends from T-Mobile have been talking about. So once I connect to my, once I build my API, I connect it to the API Explorer view in my Business Studio, and uh, actually use all these drag drop capabilities, gestures, if you see here, I can do this and I can create a service out of it. So once you create a service, uh, so this is the actual service which it, it was created, the, the stub is created, and then if we filled in up this, if you look at this customer details, it's actually connecting to a backend database system, uh, which is on the cloud. So we are creating a bunch of services, tying them all together. We're doing all these API choreography using Business Studio. Now, once my services is created, we've deployed them to uh, PCF and the Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going back to this. So this is what I've deployed. Uh, and uh, my API is also now published to uh, Tipco Mastery. This is where we are doing all the management, API management part over here. Now, on the client side, we have a project Flogo flow. Uh, so this is the request which we're talking about, is invoking the PCF service, depending if the condition is saying that the requests are coming in from the US region, if the condition is, says it's from the UK region that it is routed to the PKS side of it. So that's pretty much on the flow here. It's a simple logic, simple branching based on where the request is coming, it routes the request. Now to do this, uh, to trigger this flow, uh, right? we've created a trigger for project riff. Now this can be any AWS Lambda function or any, any fa fast service here uh, to trigger this. But for this demo, we've used the Rift trigger because that's been recently announced. Now, I've created the functions. I have actually deployed everything. I have a setup here. We'll just do a quick Rift list to see the commands. So we've already created a function called CF Summit uh, 2018. 
that, that this is the one. Now we are publishing the request. So I'm doing it. It's not. Oh, no, you don't. It's not. It's actually a bit slow. It's not responding to the command plus command. So uh, I'll actually show you the demo if the boot pod as well. So. Uh, so what you're doing now is we're publishing a request to the Riff function. So I want to invoke the Flogo flow as a function on Project Riff. So we are uh, triggering this request with the region UK. And like you see, we've had a re response back here. Now similarly, what we are also doing is we are invoking a uh, same flow with the region US now. And this invokes my service, which is on PCF here. That's one. So uh, pretty much uh, all these capabilities, like we've talked about, Project Flogo, uh, purely open source. Uh, Maven plugin, open source here. Again, we have the capabilities of monitoring your applications at uh, the application level. Bunch of things you can look at, the process instances, active instances, uh, the jobs created, and all that data into it. So. Uh, So uh, to sum it up, the key take takeaways, right? We've heard and seen Tipco uh, helping T-Mobile leverage all the app launch time from months to days, uh, savings in millions uh, for infrastructure. Uh, so Tipco as a true consistent uh, pervasive integration and API platform in terms of deployment, consumption, and the expansion flexibility as well uh, with CCI. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs>